Hi there, I'm Elaine. I'm just going to go through an installation of Python Idle Web Server and Eclipse for C programming, which you'll use later on. This is um, just to show you around very quickly what you get after an out of the box installation. So you have the icons to access your files, a web browser, and I'm now going to look for a terminal, a shell window, which will allow me to do a manual installation and update, which is what you really want to learn how to do. I'm going to just show you that you can run the GNU C compiler as a user, GCC, but obviously with no files there yet, I can't compile anything. Just make that a little bit bigger. I know I could have used control plus plus. I like to also show you different ways of doing things. So I will now make a test C file called hello world.c. So that's just including the standard input output header file. I'm now creating a main function which returns an integer back to the calling program, which is the operating system. I'm using print formatted or printf with two backslash ends, which are new lines. And just remember the semicolon at the end. I'm returning zero back to the calling system. And then I can save that using escape colon wq write and quit. So GNU C compiler, the output is going to be a binary file called hello world and the input is hello world dot c. So that's a simple way of compiling a program. You'll see that there now highlighted in green and it has the executable permissions as you'll see in the permission blocks. There's another video on all of that on permission and files. Now we're, we're okay with the C compiler so we can look at Python. A similar process there. I'm going to type in shortly a small hello world Python program but first let's look at where the files are so you can see what files you have for Python or already installed. You'll see there's a number of files there so Python 3 is the latest and you'll see some of those if you look at the permission bits they're symbolic links again if you're not sure about this go to my Linux files and directories video and I will go through that with you so we need to use Python 3 as you can see I've used PWD to print working directory LS to get a directory listing and I'm now about to make a new directory called dev or have done now and I'm going to make a another hello world program but this time it's going to be in python p.py extension and simply have to print I'm making typos because I'm not looking at this keyboard and it's not the one I normally use so this is a print statement in python so use python 3 test.py and that should run that little mini script don't need to overcomplicate it for what I'm trying to achieve on this video just to show you another editor, Jedit. I'm just adding another line in there and you'll see that that now shows up. So the next thing to do is to go away and install the idle package but I need to know what that is first. So I'm going to search for it first. Sorry I'm making mistakes but this is the kind of thing that you do when you don't do this every day. So I need to be a super user to do this because my student account hasn't got uh, the ability to, to use that command so I'll be a super user to make my life easier so I did super user do su and enter the password apt-get same command only type it incorrectly but idle you get a lengthy list in there 
just need to find out which one it is but I'm this isn't about getting everything perfect straight away I want to show you the sorts of problems you could encounter as well so you will see that I've now managed to find it I'm going to install idle 3 which is what I believe to be the correct one and it says it's going to install some other packages as well so I'm going to press yes for that and allow that to do its installation that should take a moment or or two so it has to unpack a variety of packages related to idle and now to go and find the idle editor what you'll find is I've installed the idle shell without the editor window I didn't mean to open that but let's just show you while we're here you can install various programs in that using the software applications installation and while we're here I might as well show you you can't easily find idle so that would have been no use to us anyway same with Python wouldn't have helped so back to the terminal just to carry on doing what we were doing in the first place you'll see there's nothing in there so back to what we already have which is down at the bottom I do get a bit lost occasionally because they change things around and you will see idle is there but if you can't find it then you can type it in the search box and that just opened it straight away I didn't get a chance to show you that but you'll see there's nothing really there so again if I typed it in you get to see it appear and then you can click on that if it's the right one so that's just to show you the sort of things you might do while you're navigating your new system you're clicking around just be careful what you're looking at and what you're clicking on just take your time what I've found is that I don't have the ability to create a new Python program I just have the shell where you can type in Python commands it's an interpreted language so you can type line by line but what I really want is the idle development environment where you can also set up a new window as well so I'm going to now show you that that isn't there you can't find it and what we need to do is go and look for that and we'll, we'll actually need to go and reinstall it because it isn't the one that I wanted but as, as I said at the beginning this isn't about everything working perfectly so I'm now going to attempt to install it again and see how I get on now I, I've chosen the wrong name there I should have put idle 6 but I'll find that out in a moment so I'm just trying to show you like I said the things that can go wrong so I'm going to put 3.6 on there or 7 on there it doesn't really matter just trying to show you how you find things so I'm now installing 3.7 which is also going to install Python 3.7 as well which is the latest if you make things if you break things or do things wrong you can always undo it now you can see it's quite difficult to see what these programs really are so I'm just going to remove I mean that that one there is the correct one but I'm going to in a minute remove this is the one that I wanted as you can see I can now edit as you would on a Windows system on a Raspberry Pi I can use the system in the normal way so one of them was a shell and one of them was the idle editor but it's it was quite difficult to determine which was which so I need to remove that one the one on the left hand side just to show you
So now we're going to do a clips, which is for editing C programs. You'll be doing this in the final year of your degree at, at our degrees anyway, at our college. It's always a good idea to learn how to use Eclipse and C. So I, I, I'm going to have a bit of a mess around here trying to get Eclipse on, doing the sort of things you might do. I've just typed apt get install Eclipse. I'm having a little look through it. It looks like there's a good one there called Eclipse. And maybe the CDT version as well. And it looks like I might need those, but I, I have a have an idea that they will be included with the install anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and just install what I believe to be the one that you need. But there's bound to be problems and I want to show you these problems if you were to do this following instructions for other systems you might encounter all of these problems. Trying to let you see how long this takes as well so it does drag on a bit this video but I don't want to just zoom through it and then you'll think it's all done in 15 minutes. And you can see it's installed a number of extra packages. So that looks to be done. And so I would aim to go and run that. And I know I have a, a C compiler working. So I would hope I could easily configure Eclipse to run C. It is a multi-platform, multi-language development environment. You will find though that the default install is for Java. I'm going to choose a workspace in my development area rather than the one that was selected for me. I'm putting workspace on the end just to keep things consistent. And I'm going to use that for everything in the future quick look around what you get but remembering that this is for a Java development environment by default so I wanted to show you various problems with the installation and getting Eclipse to work it does want me to restart but it doesn't need it actually for Eclipse because Eclipse runs in a Java virtual machine So there's a project and there's nothing there about creating a project in C or C++. So you can't really build it or do anything with it. You'll find in a moment. I'll just show you that. So I'm just creating a file now which will be test.c or it should be but it doesn't really matter so I won't be able to do anything with it anyway there's nothing there about C or C++ I'm going to install Eclipse again using the Eclipse C development tools, so hyphen CDT, and I've put yes there, minus yes to say just accept all yeses, so don't ask me to, for don't prompt me to agree to continue, just do everything. So that's just showing you how long it takes. It can take a little while, a few minutes, but not too long, just be patient. As you can see, it's unpacking a number of tools and utilities and packages. So it's done. And you'll find that you can't run it from the prompt, even though that would be an easy way to do things. There's a little problem in there. 
configuration issue so that can be something that can be looked at later but it isn't working at the moment as you can see there is a, a log file that you can look in I'm using the I'm going to look at this I'm going to use the tab to tab my way through this so USR lib and then I'll use EC and then the tab C and then the tab so use the tab to complete your path and you'll see there's not much actually wrong with it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the applications area the software area rather than bother with the command line option and no not in there see I, this sometimes something that I do was to go into the applications and that was the wrong area not to go into the briefcase with the A which seems like the obvious place to go so you'll see I've got my C C++ development now this time so this is showing me that I have some C tools installed but I can't get access to the help because I do not have Tomcat installed I'm not too worried about that but if I was to go and install Tomcat then I'd be able to see the tutorials so I'm now going to create a new project I'm just showing you around first so a new project which will be a C or C++ project and I will just call this test oh, that's fine test C2 and I'm going to choose a hello world project that will make it for me it's a good one to use for just testing your environment just fill in the boxes why not the source is going to be in src and the output will be in the debug i don't need any other information yes i want to show this perspective please it's telling me that because it's normally used for java so it's given me some code very helpfully with the standard input output and the standard library which allows you to access the exit that's not going to work I, sorry I just run that it's not going to work so I now need to tell the system where to find the executable just showing you a few places where you might find yourself looking in the properties it's not going to be in there but you could find yourself looking around maybe go and do a tutorial on what all of this is but what you need are the debug settings new in there you're, you're indicating that it's in the debug location you want to build automatically when you press run and just have a little look around at some point now that should run okay as you can see so thank you for watching see my video on installing a web server to continue with this installation <laughs>